So if you want to squat in the downswing, like you see all the top pros do for that effortless power, and it would absolutely give you that when you achieve it. But no matter how hard you try, you're just too vertical, you don't squat down, you don't know how to do it. Well, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in your swing to be able to squat, because you need to have your swing set up to squat. You need to do the right three things that you can see here to be able to get that nice lowering down movement to get that good power. And this is something you never hear instructors talk about. So let's get straight into the first thing we need to do. So number one, setting up in old man posture. So what on earth does that mean? That means setting up like this, having a tiny bend to the knees, pelvis tucked underneath me, and having a gradual round to the upper back. This is the setup to squat. Because who's this here? This is the king of squatting in a downswing. Sam Sneed, and that was famously coined for his movement in transition, was the Sam Sneed squat. They all used to set up back in the day like this, in this old man posture, straight knees, pelvis tucked underneath, a little bit of a round, and they all squat amazingly to start that downswing. But where do we see players? We see players like this, in this athletic posture, where they've got loads of knee flex, pelvis is tucked underneath them, they've got this really curved back there, and then all that's gonna happen because they're so low to the ground is they're just gonna stand up again to one, get their balance from this poor posture, but also get that club out the ground. If you set up squatted, you're not gonna remain like that in the swing. The swing's dynamic. It moves in, up into the ground and turns. You're not gonna do that via being down here. Keegan Bradley is probably the only player I can think of who sets up like that and still can manage to stay down. Why base it off of one player? So that's where we need to have that good posture because if we're in that old man posture, we can then turn in that backswing load up in this taller position, like starting a lawnmower type of movement with the body, extend and turn, and that's setting us up to be able to dig down into the ground, just like a Sam Sneed, and then turn through. So setting up in old man posture, let's tell you how to do that, is just like this. Set up to the golf ball with a very slight bend in the knees. Grab a club, put it right in front of you, and then relax your mid and upper back until your club reaches the ground. Boom, there we go. Now, if you've got long arms like myself, take a little shuffle back, and now you're gonna be turning in this taller position to where then you can dig down into the ground and then turn through. So, in that nice little procedure, gets you in old man posture, just like Sam Sneed, and we'll set you up to squat, just like Sam Sneed. So number two, keep your height in the backswing. So I want to see you as you turn. So let's say I had a red line here on my head. I want to turn up to the top and keep myself on that red line. And even if I draw another red line there on the top of my head, I don't want to move massively down. We'll see some players as they start to transition into downswing early, they might have a little movement down as they get their pressure into the lead side. But for most golfers out there, I want to see you stay the same. Again, that's making you able to move down. Just like if you're gonna do a vertical jump, you're gonna be tall, you're gonna go down, and then back up again. We're not gonna squat if we're already low. I see this so often with my students with online lessons on Skillist. I'll see them really wanting to squat, but they're like this at the top of the swing. They've lowered down so much where they might then squat from there. And then they think, why am I not, why can I not stop early extending? Because if they've got low to get out to the top of the swing and then they get lower, obviously I'm exaggerating it quite a bit, but what else can I do other than fatten it? I'm gonna have to stand my body up going through the shot. So that's why you need to be at a decent height. You can lose a little bit of height. You can gain a little bit of height, but we generally want to stay very similar to where we are at that top of the swing there. So we don't want to be moving down because then we have to stand up a ton if we move more down from there. Generally, if people move down, they're just going to move back up again. So common. So keep that height nicely. And that's going to help you massively to be able to squat. A good little drill I like to do is something we see the likes of Rory McIlroy do. We see Nelly Korda do this drill. He's arguably the best player in the world. Have a ball just outside the ball you're setting up to. Get the club across the shoulders and then rotate to where the button of the club is pointing at the ball in front there. If you go more down, the button of the club's going to point too much down. If you go too up and lose your tilt, the butt end of the club's got to point out in front. So a lot of players kind of view this as a very basic and almost beginner-like drill. But again, Nelly Corder does it, Rory McIlroy does it. Keeping in good tilt and good height, having that butt end of the club 
pointing at the ball, you put a club head in front of your ball you're setting up to, keeps you in good height, keeps you in good tilt, sets you up not only to squat, but just to move generally better in that downswing. So if you've done a ton of those to feel it, do some practice swings, and then absolutely, let's do one from there. Good. So number three, and that's how you're moving as you start that downswing. So now you've got yourself set up to move nicely. You're setting up to the golf ball well, you're turning up to the top well. Now all you've got to do is get into hip flexion. So hip flexion is so important. Now with hip flexion, as you've seen, chair just chilling there for this whole video. We're going to use that in a minute, favor of the channel, but it's need to those other two points to be in there to be able to get that squat. Hip flexion is ultimately hips pushing back as we start the downswing. When those hips push back, it's going to give you that squatting visual. That is ultimately what squatting is. Getting that left hip to go back is going to get those knees flexing more. That left hip pushing back is going to get pressure onto that left side, into that left heel, and that's really going to get you into that nice squat. So that's where we see all the best players in the world who get into hip flexion. They all squat. But a lot of people thinking, are they just going down? Nope, they're not doing that. They're pushing their left hip back. Because guys, if you are just trying to squat by just pushing and going down, that is not getting any benefit out of the squat. That's just, just generally lowering down. You just got to stand up from there. But that's where pushing the left hip back gets you squatting, but it also starts opening up the hips and starts the extension sequencing also. Exactly what we want. So left hip going back, that's what we need. So many players go forward, they start that downswing without even knowing. So I'd always encourage everyone, just like here, draw a pelvis line and then have a look at that pelvis line. I'm going to push this hip back now. Got this good setup. Going to stay tall. And you can see there, I kept that pelvis back throughout that swing. If I start to move forward, I'm not going to squat and I'm not going to lower down and use the ground properly. So the drill, absolutely. He's been chilling here the entire time. Grab your chair now. Give yourself half a grip's distance between you and the chair. So now I want you to turn down that downswing, cover that gap, close that gap in with your left hip. That's going to get you, as we can see, just demonstrating it, squatting. But again, you're only going to squat if those two other spots are nice. Old man posture, keeping tall. So have a gap, close in that gap. You don't have to do it quickly. Do it nice and slow and controlled when you start off with. Again, the speed gets applied through the golf ball, not in the start of the downswing. Here we go. Let's do it. Results in really, really nice striking. If you lose your balance as well doing this, don't worry about it. Your body's learning to move differently. You're not going to be able to balance that immediately. So half a grips distance. If I said club, I meant grips distance. Chair behind you there. Nice old man posture. Keeping tall, getting that left hip to touch that chair, getting the hip depth. There we go. That's what you need to do. And then once you've done enough of those reps, you'll get a very distinct feel from that. But imagine there's a wall behind you. So it's like here with me hitting balls, I've got this netting behind me. Now that netting is so far back, I'll never be able to hit it with my hips. But if I try to, it's going to get me in hip flexion. So there we go. That's our keys, our three keys. If we can do that, we will absolutely not only start to squat, but we'll also start to rotate better, get better power like we see those top pros and have better striking. So it's multifaceted, it's gonna help your tons. So and then if you still need more help from there, online lessons are available in my video description on Skillist. So absolutely, if you enjoyed this video, click that like button for more golf instruction, just like this, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell button too, to be notified every time I put out a video.